shows. And uh, one this one particular person, she she'd emailed me in to say that they were going to a WWE. Uh, I think it was a Raw taping in the UK, and um, you know how much it had all cost. Obviously, it's not cheap anymore either. Like no. the ticket prices are crazy now. Um, and yeah, she'd gone there, but she had such a. I mean, they had a terrible experience just because they were like, well, the matches, the kids didn't really enjoy them. They weren't that long. It kept going on and off. And, um, they, you know, I, I recommended them like a week later to go to this, just this local wrestling show where it's like a fraction of the price. And, you know, I said, like, at the, at the end of it, you know, the kids, they're not, it's obviously, it's not Roman Reigns and John Cena you're going to see. But I knew this particular promotion. They treated their wrestlers as stars and they really yeah. sort of made them as the focus. And, they, and some some really good promotions do that. I really think it's important, no matter what level you're at, when the crowd come in, that the wrestlers are the focus. doesn't matter what level you're at. And uh, and they said they had like the total opposite experience. Like it was amazing. They were, they were amazed at how close they were to the action. And the quality of match that they got now, which is one of the biggest things I would say that's improved in the UK, is the quality of wrestling now. You you could actually argue that you might get better on an indie show than you would at a WWE taping, at least, because at the tapings, you know as well as I do, it's very much geared towards TV now. Uh, it's not really for the live crowd. Um, I, I, the, the Raw I went to, for instance, this most ridiculous thing, and I don't know what I would have done if I was a kid, because if I was a kid, I think, even though I knew wrestling wasn't quote-unquote like a legit sport, I at least liked to, I liked the mystery of it, if that makes sense. Like they didn't just say, oh, it is what it is. It's entertainment, um, internally at least, anyway. Um, so there was always that mystery about it. And um, the, the last time I went to this Raw show, um, <laughs> Dolph Ziggler, I think it was, he was in the ring. I don't know, he, he looked like he'd been run over by a truck. And then because he's not out of the ring in time, this referee, <laughs> this referee on his headset, he's like, you've got to get out there quick. They're about to bring the next guy down. You can like blatantly hear it. And then all, all of a sudden, Dolph Ziggler gets up like nobody's business and does a hundred meter sprint backstage. And I'm like, oh, OK, that took me out of it a little bit then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? Like there's no point even trying to disguise it now, it seems, um, because everything is just so geared towards that television market. Yeah. Um, which is a real shame. And I, I would say to most people, if you want to get to a WWE show, try to get the live shows because you're probably going to get a, a lot better and the timing is better and stuff like that um, for things. But yeah, it, it's it's a bit of a shame, but I think that's one of the, the good things the UK uh, promotions can capitalise on is, is having those kind of moments and having that in the moment uh, with the fans and interacting with them and that closeness that, you know, you just can't get from a WWE show sometimes. And uh, that's something Agreed. that wasn't always there. I mean, if I was younger, the only thing I wanted to go to was a WWF show. I wasn't really too fussed about anything else. But now I think um, there's enough talent around. And because of social media, we see people on our screens all the time. So it's very different to how it used to be. Uh, yeah. With, with I do miss the mis- I do m- I do miss the mystique yeah. of some of it back then, you know. But um, as you said, things change and what have you. And, mm-hmm. uh, going back to your point of promotions making their guys look like stars, mm-hmm. um, especially, you know, if they're not on TV. Um, yeah. It's one thing It's one thing that, you know, I take responsible of, you know, whatever show that I'm on. Mm-hmm. It's my job to make someone feel like they're a, a star. Yeah. Um, I put, I put hand on heart. I prefer being a commentator as an MC mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because I like telling the stories and I love putting yep. the characters over. Mm-hmm. Um, God, listen, and I'm, by all means, I'm not blowing my own trumpet. I would never do that. But there has been some bad ones out there, you know, that yeah. just wish to put themselves <laughs> over. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they don't pay attention to what's going on in the ring, mm-hmm. not putting the characters over, you know, and it's, yeah. uh, you know, it it does take, it's a, it's it's an art. It's an art form, like like mm-hmm. anything, you know. In that in that business, you know, the the announcer is important. The wrestlers, of course, are important. The referee is so important. Mm-hmm. Referee is probably one of the most important persons in a match. You know. Um, yeah. I think a referee can make a wrestler sometimes as well if mm-hmm. done correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's always been about you know, it's all about making 
it's always about making people feel larger than life because that's what it is. It's just, as you said, it's escapism. Mm-hmm. And when you're the first one to come through the curtain before introducing any of the wrestlers, you feel, you know, right, you've got to get this crowd up tonight, you know, and yeah, yeah. To make them feel they're part of something really special mm-hmm. because you never know. You, you might have done 100 shows. There's, there may be someone in that crowd that might be their first ever show that they've been to. So yeah. you've always got to give it always got to give it your all you know mm-hmm. that's that's my take on it anyway yeah yeah well uh, interestingly i had um and actually he he asked me to say hello to you uh holler at you that was sam the he uh he was recently oh, yeah. on on one of my my other podcasts he said to say hi to you um but we were talking about um stuff around like how wrestling has evolved and changed because obviously he comes from that old sort of style background if you want i call it old it's not really old it's sort of late 90s but i feel old when i have some of my guests on here i can assure well, I think you sam's about 60 odd now i'm gonna let you tell him that um and and yeah so i i uh, we were talking about like how stuff's evolved and, and changed from sort of the old promotions and that protection but you know like one of the things we were talking about and certainly it's something that my listeners have picked up on because a lot of them hadn't gone back. Like when we've been doing this retrospective stuff with In Your House, first of all, the, the biggest feedbacks I got on it was I never knew Vince McMahon had been an announcer before the commentator, which, I mean, Vince McMahon commentating is an art to itself. I tell you that much when you listen I, to this guy. When I, you I see love, the captions on, it's amazing. Um, Vince is great as a commentator, personally. I think what's fascinating for people is the fact that he he's so embedded in that role, he doesn't once come out and say he's the boss. You know what I mean? Like He really got into that, that whole thing of being Vince McMahon, the commentator, and that's it. Um, you know, he never really come out of that, did he? Um, and the whole, I think the use of the unbelievable word always gets people. Um, and when he used to do the counts, but that, that came back. But the other thing um, that me and Sam were talking about was the lost kind of art that seems to have happened with the backstage interview. Like it, it's something that doesn't seem to exist even in WWE anymore. Like it just seems to yeah. be a tool that isn't there. Um, and I don't know how that sort of ended or finished. Um, but even at like the big shows now, like even WrestleManias, they, they used to have some parts of it. It used to be quite a big moment, but now it's just yeah it's something that's just really fell flat and they don't use that sort of tool anymore why do you think that is is that just like a like a, a modern thing that that's sort of perceived as an old kind of way of doing it or because I, I actually think there's real there, there's good stuff to have it I, I mean obviously nwa are doing it because it's it's a throwback a bit of a nod to what they used to do but um in terms of that there's not many promotions i'd say that that use the, the backstage interview anymore I think personally, and I tell you what, it's something that I personally really, really miss. Um, mm-hmm. In my honest, in my honest opinion, I think there's too much talking, too much talking inside the ring, right? Uh, these days, um, mm-hmm. I think where they've tried to make wrestling just more uh, realism, you know, mm-hmm. because they always want to try and compare themselves to things like MMA and boxing and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, I mean, let's face it, a lot of the guys on WWE, they, they have scripted promos. It's no secret. Yeah, yeah. Like that. Uh, guys are thinking too much about what what the next thing's going to come out of their mouth. Mm-hmm. As where the, my my biggest thing about WWE back in the day was was the interviews. You know, yeah. it was about the interviews. I mean, there was nothing more that I enjoyed. I mean, sometimes I enjoyed the interviews more than the matches. You'd have you'd have Mean Gene Oakland or Sean Mooney, and be talking with the likes of Hulk Hogan, Old McWire, yeah. Big Boss Man. You know, and the interviews were so hyped and. They were crazy. Whatever they was on, I don't care. But it was, <laughs> it was just, it was amazing. You know, mm-hmm. it made you feel, you believed that that person was going to go and try him. Mm-hmm. You believed that someone was going to go and get that other guy and beat him up. You know, it was, um, it wasn't scripted. You know, it, it yeah. was in the heart. And I think that's what it's all about. And if you're not that good at promos and you, you keep practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing and by all means, I've dealt, I've done it a few times. I've done it for EWW. I'll be the backstage interviewer. Mm-hmm. I'll put on a suit, you know, and it's something, you know, it's, again, it goes back to making your wrestlers feel larger than life, you know. Yeah. You're not there to steal the spotlight. You're there to, you know, provide the questions and to mm-hmm. make your, make the guys just feel that little bit more special than they are, you know. Mm-hmm. And 
I definitely think it's a, I think something like All Star that would be perfect. You know, yeah. or, you know, because they've got all the they, their roster is so mixed. You know, mm-hmm. and, you know the high flyers, the technicians, the giants. You know, things like that. Mm-hmm. So, but um, it's definitely that's yeah, one thing. I always said if I ever ran a company, I said that's one thing that I would love to do. I love to you know just have a. I'd have no promos inside the ring. I would mm-hmm. just have a specific, specifically for the uh, backs for the DVDs or the on-demand, whatever. I yeah. Would have, um, yeah, I'd have a guy in a tuxedo, and I would have a guy just uh, sitting there, standing there doing the interviews with all mm-hmm. the wrestlers, and you get all the best promos that you can out of them. I think yes. And and again, back then, even though there wasn't much content back then as there is now, obviously, mm-hmm. but again, it made you intrigued. It helped carry the story because you had one event where the guys mm-hmm. are talking and then that would drag through and you wouldn't get the big payoff until about three, four, five months, or even six months later, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a good, it's a good way to plant seeds as well. And yeah, then you can kind of have like overlapping stories going on at one time um, and stuff like that. But yeah. And, and we know it can be done because like I said, in, in, this was going on with the FWA for quite a while. I mean, they, they've made very good use of their TV at the time but with social media now um it's even more easier to do and get and get a video out i mean literally just it's done it's there um but yeah it's, it's one of those things i i genuinely kind of miss that backstage interview i know that in the early days there was it was mainly shouting and screaming but man I, it got me ready and hyped for it i mean yeah jake jake, jake roberts was obviously the exception to the rule book there because he he could just deliver a promo that would i mean the way he looked into the camera i would literally like be melting <laughs> i'd be like so scared yeah that this guy just because he he could just have that same tone but those words and the way he delivered it was just like so um so amazing like great and, art and, form the fact, and the fact that he's now in AEW. And yeah, to this, and to this day, even yeah, on still AEW, holds up. I think he delivers the best promos. Yeah, that, you know that yeah. says it all for me personally. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think there's something to be said, like as well. You you was talking about the overscript stuff, and I totally get that. And um, the one thing I find, like when I'm out on the road, and obviously I do some interviews with uh, with wrestlers, and I, I think you you know, you can tell instantly if somebody's not quite ready for it or up for it or is a little bit nervous. Um, and often those are the, the people that I would say they, they just haven't got to grips with maybe their character at this point and they don't know their character. But I'm always telling people, like, really, really just be the character because the way you answer, the way you react, the way you're going to fire back at me or whatever... It's all going to come from that. You can't really over script stuff um, because it just doesn't come out natural. Um, and I think that, you know, there's a big difference. The one thing I really dislike about today, and this is in all walks of wrestling, for me anyway, just a personal thing, is I hate the idea of, like, people playing wrestlers as opposed to being wrestlers, if that makes sense. Like, obviously... Rowdy Roddy Piper, you know, most of those guys, they, they were literally that 24-7. Now, I know you can't dedicate yourself 100%, especially on the indie scene, but I think you have to have a real level of commitment for it to be successful or not. And I think the character um, that you play or you portray, you need to really know it to the point where you can stand in front of somebody and you know how to react. You know how that character is going to react. And you are a part of it as opposed to playing the character. And I think there's a big difference um, in that. What, why do you think that's – is that something that's just been lost sort of down the line, like where guys come through now and they're just not as familiar as to be like – they almost feel like they're, they're, they're one or the other, but they're not truly it. I mean, how does that happen, do you think? There's different kind of answers for that, really. First yeah. of all, I think there's not enough good wrestling schools. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of terrible wrestling schools out there than there is good wrestling schools, yeah. uh, without naming any. Uh, there, there, mm-hmm. there are some fantastic ones out there. There really yeah. are. Uh, but there's a lot of terrible ones out there as well, mm-hmm. where even the head trainers themselves are not that experienced. And, mm-hmm. you know, wrestling's not just about wrestling. 
Mm-hmm. So that, that just my opinion, obviously. Yeah, so, yeah. For me, the more show for me, if you've got all the showmanship and not enough wrestling, 